He went out just like he came into this world, screaming and covered in moisture. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for coming back and checking out the channel. Today we have a 2024-2025 uh, S650 uh, getting a Whipple supercharger with a VMP lid or whatever this thing is. It's going to make some pretty good power. I think we dynoed it yesterday and it made right around 430, 440. It was picking up some false knock, probably bad fuel or something going on. Uh, but we're going to put the blower on and hopefully by the end of the week we'll have some solid numbers, probably make mid sixes i don't know if they make sevens on the in this current configuration but we'll see this is a full package it'll have wheels and other things uh, really tasteful stuff that the customer put together we're just kind of slapping the parts all on it for them so stay tuned it's a s650 so stock motor stock trans i don't stock even know if tune. stock stock or whatever whipple tune they have for it so it's not going to make like an ungodly amount of power it'll probably make like i said mid sixes maybe sevens in this current configuration but how does that work with the whipple tune i thought the ecus were locked on the, the ecus are locked to everybody except the whipple so whipple went uh to ford and basically got permission to to tune these things after they passed several rigorous tests that nobody else seems to be able to comply with or pass with i know there's a couple other companies out there Procharger, uh helion and everybody else they're kind of just waiting there uh, and none of them, no, nobody else has been approved. I think Roush has been improved, but I mean, who wants a Roush blower? So at this point in the game, you know, you, you get a Whipple and you know, that's, so can that's, you up the boost on them or? You can, there's some people that get aggressive with it. They'll get cute. They'll run a little bit more, uh, aggressive pulley combos, maybe add a meth kit, maybe add some nitrous here and there. Weight but reduction. The, the, the weight reduction, right? But the tuning is the tuning. So whatever Whipple decides to give you, that's what you get. Now, some of the more popular shops may get out and get a little bit more aggressive tune but that's neither here nor there you know that's that's between them and whipple and god it's favoritism so, you know you get what you get but for all intents and purposes uh as far as uh the epa and their regulations and the tuning that whipple is putting out everybody gets the same tune and it's very safe and good for the environment so no e85 is supporting uh they do like a blend which again, you know, they figured out on their own, not with Whipple, right? They kind of just do their own thing. So, but it's not like you can go out there and run like a set of uh, 1050 injectors or, you know, nothing huge. You run, I think they they run like the biggest, like stage two is like a set of like 55s or something like that. So you go as far as those injectors will take you, plus a blend, maybe some meth here and there, methanol kit. This car is a cool color, but it's not my car. My car is parked out front, uh, enjoying the header and a lowered life so it's very loud it has selective exhaust it just chooses to start it up at full blast no uh there's a certain time window that i have selected so between like anything before 7 a.m it gets started in quiet mode anything else cover your ears or if i'm near it trying to give me a heart attack and collect the life insurance policy but what am i going to do with like the two bands they're going to give me for you <laughs> I have to cremate you. I'd be like, give me the smallest jar for this little dude. <laughs> like I'll wear him in a necklace. When I go to Japan, it'd be like, yeah, look, Richard, we made it to Japan, buddy. <laughs> nice. Be like, let me go find some Asian waifus to pour you inside of. He went out just like he came into this world, screaming and covered in moisture. <laughs> <laughs> and are VMP and Whipple associated with one another? Uh, VMP probably wasn't going to get approved on their own. So they decided to piggyback onto Whipple, right? And then they got approved. Supposedly there's, they helped with the intercooler technology and blah, 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 blah. But who knows? Like, does it really matter? The blower is the same. This blower is not making any more than, you know, the stage two Whipple is making. So I'm sure they had some nice conversations and they figured out a deal that was lucrative enough for the both of them. I mean, if we're just being honest. Then that means there's no twin turbo kits for these cars yet. They're out there, but again, tuning is limited. So you're just basically hacking around the factory calibration. You know, okay. there's been rumors, there's been rumors that some people are running the uh, Whipple tunes on the twin turbo kits oh, and basically okay. running the bigger injectors and you're able to 
get some boost in there, especially on the F-150. There's been rumors. That's all I can say, right? Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if somebody did the same thing with the Mustangs. The only difference is with the Mustangs, since it has, uh, you know, dual intakes, it'll have to keep that same configuration, which I think is, is what would look good anyways, right? You have two charge pipes coming off of a single intercooler and, you know, everything looks fucking killer. It's very symmetrical, very uh, aesthetically pleasing. So that's the way that I would want to do it. So if they do ever unlock the ECUs, which I don't think they will, you know, we'll have Aldo make a nice kit that's, you know, very symmetrical and everything matches and it a looks good. A good turbo kit. A good turbo kit, yeah. Not there's low. a few, yeah, there's a couple of different ones out there, but nobody's really trash. making, nobody's making any power or trash. on it right now. So, inside. Could you not just run an aftermarket ECU? You could, but then that kind of defeats the whole purpose. Uh, you know, many moons ago, I got into an argument over somebody with Motec on our cars, right? Because they were like, hey, well, look, you can put Motec on this thing. And I was like, the average Mustang person isn't going to spend standalone money on a car that they bought brand new. Now, somebody like me, who happens to have just gotten a Motec for it, you know, I'm beyond the point where five or six K is going to make or break the car or even 10 K, 15 K, where you're just like, OK, well, that's, you know, small amount in comparison of the whole car in the grand scheme of things. Right. Like you're at the point where like, OK, maybe a standalone does offer some benefits. Um, but like, I mean, imagine buying this car and you want to run twin turbos on it and you have to put a, a Motec system on it. That's not plug and play. You just have to, you know, kind of do a whole full standalone kit. Why not just buy a, a Gen 2, Gen 3 car? And the only real difference between these is a set of headlights. Like, come on. What oil is recommended for these blowers? Uh, Masola. Get it at your uh, local Michoacana or uh, Mi Tienda if you have that. Where you Fiesta are. too. Fiesta if you have those. HEB also has the solar. Uh, that's what it looks like, but it's really uh, their own uh, oil blend for the uh, blower. Basically, whenever this gets shipped in, it arrives empty. You have to make sure you fill this up. There's even a sticker on the back of this, and you won't believe how many I've had come to the shop for repairs that did not have any oil on them. So always make sure you put the entire bottle into the uh, the blower itself before you install it on the vehicle. Really important. I'm saying this, the whole reason why this video even exists is because people forget to do this very important step. It matters. It's one of those times where Brian's right about me needing to go to the gym because I like the upper body strength to just, you know, but it's all right, we'll make it work. Just gotta get it in here and then I'll wiggle it in. No problem at all. slide it around easier and get the holes to line up because the last thing you want to do is cross thread one of the intake manifold bolts to the cylinder head that's not really it's not a hard fix but not one that you want to have to do this late into the install so now that the blower seated on there i can start running in the bolts and do the hard part i guess which is the back bolts which i have a special tool for that uh, you get it off of any tool truck uh, or online but it's the snap-on swivel socket it's a 10 shallow and then here for comparison reasons because i have used both with success in the past but i prefer the shallow one this is the cornwall version which i'm not knocking them at all this is the cbpu 17m from cornwall 10 millimeter um it does get in tight spots but this one is leaps and bounds better just because it's much it's such a lower profile uh head on it that i can get in there and use a long extension and, and basically tighten up the bolts and, and get it really down like tight to where it's not going to back out so 
really important that you have one of these before you try to tackle, well, tackle one of these installs because it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> I'm about to run in the bolts. Um, all that's left now after it's tight is just like some uh, small amount of electronics, uh, EVAP solenoids, the lid obviously, the O-ring for the lid is a very important one that seals against the bypass um, so you don't have any boost leaks or ragged leaks for that matter. Uh, and then the plumbing for the intercooler and heat exchanger uh, and the, the uh, heat exchanger pump as well which goes on the bottom of the frame. Aside from that, I mean pretty much in the home chart, I'd say this job's about 75% done and the rest is just a tedious work of grinding all the hoses for the heater uh, or for the heat exchanger and everything else but that shouldn't be too bad of a job to do um, probably tomorrow uh, tonight before i leave i'm gonna make sure this thing's bolted on at least with the lid in place as well and the back of the fuel line hooked up in the back uh, hook up the injectors and stuff like that maybe even throttle body and stuff like that just try to get as far as i can before you know tomorrow just because tomorrow seems to be where uh, seems to be like a full day of not just this, but also tuning and whatnot. So we'll try to get it done. It's now done, ready to fire up. Uh, have the blower on, basically everything with the Whipple slash VMP kit that's on it. Uh, we'll be firing firing it up here shortly here with the next couple minutes have it on the dyno and see what it picked up uh, i think it hit uh like 445 450 or something like that uh in the stock configuration so curious to see what it picks up stay tuned so i just pulled this out of the box um i guess i'm doing wheels on this car as well and I'll put these on last uh, because I still have to do some suspension mods in the rear. The Whipple kit is already installed. It's ready to go. You can see the dual inlets, uh, single throttle body setup on something like this uh, is uh, what they call the stage one. It should make some pretty decent power though. Um, but it's ready to, I, I can literally just drive it over to the dyno and start making dyno pulls. But I do have to install some Steeda uh, bushing lockouts and as well as some subframe bracing in the back first and then I'll do the wheels and then I'll call the customer and tell them come get it because it's ready to go so stay tuned we'll uh, have this thing done here in a little bit and then we're gonna move it over next door to the dyno bay and strap it down and see what it makes on the dyno Welcome back. It's uh, what day is it? Is that Monday? Monday? Okay, it's Monday. Uh, car's done. It's ready to go. Uh, about to do the dyno pulls to see the differences in horsepower, which I do believe we have the original clip of when we did the dyno pull when that was bone stock. Um, so we're gonna do a comparison and see how much it picked up now. Uh, I'm estimating like 200-ish on this pulley, maybe 250. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm gonna let it start up. I'm gonna start it up, let it warm up, get the juices going, and let the rear end roll a little bit, get some heat up in the differential, and then uh, we'll, we'll do some power pulls to see what happens. Same gear, same everything. Um, so sit tight and uh, let's see what it makes. guys thanks for coming back and checking out the channel so i spoke with the customer after the last dyno pulls uh they were a little the results were a little subpar were, weren't really up to our standards and what we expected uh, i let them know like hey we think this thing's hitting a cat over temp and 
possibly pulling some power out of it to kind of protect itself. Uh, talk to the customer. Customer's really cool, understanding, knowledgeable guy. He said, man, let's go ahead and put a set of headers on it. So we're gonna do some dyno pulls right now, see the difference, see what it picks up, and just kind of go from there. Stay tuned. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. It's done. It's a wrap. Cut it off. There you go. 680, 679. I think it made 617 before with the factory exhaust manifolds. So I only graduated high school. So 680 minus 617. Let's call it roughly 60 horsepower, give or take a horsepower or two. And we're done. That's it. Just with the headers. Money well spent. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's free horsepower because you still spent a grip on the whole kit, but I mean, it helps and you don't have to worry about them, you know, blowing up, clogging, costing you an engine. The Shelby trucks are really, really bad about that. So pretty happy that the customer decided to go ahead and put a set of headers on this thing. Data log, tuning, everything looks solid. So we're ready to turn it back into them. I think he'll be happy with it and he'll think it's money well spent. So stay tuned. Like Mexico!